So every week we put out multiple episodes to help you on your jiu-jitsu journey. Now, it's a privilege for us to be in this position, but we want to ask one thing from you. And this is a very small gesture on your part, but it means the world to us. Simply hit the follow or subscribe button on whichever platform you enjoy this podcast on. It means the world to us. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. I'm JT. I'm here with my bro, Joey. What's up, guys? Today, we're going to talk, we're going to touch on a lot of different subjects or topics under the umbrella of respect in BJJ. Now, this is a very broad topic because I believe it encompasses many things relevant to belts, people coming up in the belts, ego related to belts, black belt entitlements, what does that mean, uh, seniority, uh, you know, this is, it's, it's one of a, it's a, it's a funny, it's a taboo topic because some academies, people don't care. It's like, if you're good enough, all right, you're coming up, here's a brown belt. You got a brown belt in two years. Josh Saunders, for example. Brown Did belt in two years. Yeah. Something like that. Two and a bit years, right? Days. They're not, <laughs> it's quick. It's quick. And then there's some places where if you even try and have that discussion, you're going to be on your belt for five or six years. Yeah. You know, they're going to hold you back. But what I want to talk about this idea of respect, because we've discussed sports and martial arts and the difference and possibly how modern jujitsu is changing the view on what is considered to be high skill level and all these different things. But I wanted to touch on first things first, black belt entitlement, because there's a lot of kind of shade thrown on black belts because it's like oh you're a black belt so you think you're entitled to x whatever that might be you're entitled to the you've had that shade thrown at you uh no i've 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 seen it i i don't i don't ask for any particularly any particular special privilege other than if i'm rolling and i'm trying to throw someone through the floor you should move in your own self-interest you don't want to get in the way that's not, I'm a black belt. That's, just get the f*** out of my way. You don't want to get hurt because I am intent on finishing my job. That's because I, I roll with a certain level of intensity. And also, I don't want you to get hurt. But no, no, no. I've seen it in other circumstances where people are like, oh, they're black belts. They're acting special. Or, you know, they think they're above us. That's not humble. That's Said that. I'll smash them. <laughs> just people. People on the internet. No, people in general. I've, I've seen the discussions and it's interesting to me because I, I personally believe that, yeah, if someone has a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu specifically, they do deserve a certain level of respect because they had to work really f***ing hard for it. And we all know it takes ages. It takes, you know, some people quicker, some people longer, but it takes years and years and years. This isn't like a karate black belt you got when you were 13 or something. Like I got my, I got my taekwondo black belt when I was 14. Now, I trained for four years, but I'm 14 years old. I don't know shit about life. Like, yeah, I can punch through two or three boards, and I can do my fucking Carter's Pumse perfect. Pumse. Pumse. That's, what they, that's what they call Carter in, in Korean. But it's one of those things that it's like, once you start doing fucking Pumse to music, like, is it martial arts anymore? Is it aerobics? What the fuck? is going on like it's it's a bit of a joke to think for me looking back on it when i was 14 years old i was like, i'm a black belt yeah bitch but also i wanted to like get in street fights and like <laughs> prove myself you know like you know i wanted my life to be an action movie i was 14 years old i'm an idiot i think when we look at the structure within jujitsu you know you can't officially get a blue belt till you're 16 yeah you know you can't get a black belt till you're 18 yeah. There's, there's certain structures in place which I actually think are good. And we all know how big and how hard jiu-jitsu is that the amount of time, dedication, and effort applied, you definitely got to put a little bit of respect on that. It's got to be worth something. Right? Yeah. There's a reason why they are at the front of the room. I think what can get confused with this idea of black belt entitlement is certain people may have a black belt and so they may conduct themselves a certain way on the mat, but then they may not behave very well off the mat. You know, their personal life 
might be a shambles. They might be a great jiu-jitsu coach. They might have the best De La Hiva game, blah, blah, blah. But when you get to know them outside of jiu-jitsu, you're like, oh, that seems like not congruent. And so people are like, well, you, you're not entitled to behave a certain way. Like you can't demand of me X if you do, you know what I mean? I feel like people look at you like you're a black belt. You have to be a perfect person. And I actually don't think that's true. I think you can look at someone and go, right, you're really good at jujitsu. So I'm going to take your advice on jujitsu. I'm not going to be investing in your NFT project. Yeah. So I guess the, I suppose the, the danger there is that for anyone that's, and, and I know I felt this when I was early on in the game, you, you look at black belts and you just think that they're incredible. They're the best. Yeah, you're they're like, gods. whoa. You know, look how strong they look and f- they're so good. at They're perfect at jiu-jitsu and there's kind of some natural thing we do in our heads where you just extend, wow, they probably really got their shit together in all areas of life. Mm. It's kind of like I feel that as a personal trainer. People you know, think, you really got your shit. And I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> but <laughs> that's not the case for other personal trainers, right? Depends. You, but it, it depends on the person. It does, right? Like there's there's actually nothing to say that you're anything except good, good. at this specific thing. Yes. Right? Like you're good at training or you're good at jujitsu. And so yeah, I think that's a I think that's a bit of a trap, isn't it? Like that lends itself to like it's just a, a bit of an illusion for less experienced folks. And and I think the, the the stigma of the black belt entitlement just comes from a couple of bad black belts where people are like Oh, I'm the black belt. We all go to lunch. Everyone pays for me. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm the big dog. This has got to be Brazilian. I don't, no, 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 black no, 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 no. Yeah, I know one in particular. The, yeah, that was yeah. like you buy my did lunch. A, did a fundraiser for his gym. Didn't improve the gym and bought a Hummer. Huh. Yeah. Right on. Bag. 100%. Trading off. Oh, I am second lineage to this famous jiu-jitsu person and... You know, so if you want to be down with the, you know, the real, give me money, give me money, give me money. Wow. Like it was just real bullshit behavior, you know. So I think this is the thing. It, it, it only takes a couple of bad apples to spoil the bunch, you know, that people see really bad behavior, whether it's like abuse of power, like just getting students to do things on their behalf for free, which you would pay anyone else to do. But it's like, I'm the black belt. I'm the coach. You want to come up under my my system? Do as I say. And that can be, that's really just bad relationships, really. That's someone just exhibiting really poor behaviors and establishing relationships. But then we've also seen, you know, cases of sexual abuse and pressuring of younger people to do things. And it's like... Yeah, I saw a video, it was in Portuguese, but a, a, a coach, a black belt coach, like slapping the shit out of like his receptionist, like a like a oh, a young God. male student receptionist at the academy over some argument or something. Yeah, like just abuse. What are you doing? Yeah, straight up abuse. And and I don't think a black belt entitles you to anything special. You're not going into McDonald's like, uh, can I get fifty percent off? You're not a police officer. <laughs> you know, like in Australia, um, our service people get discounts at McDonald's. I believe. I know, like they can get in and get a cheaper meal. Yep. You can't walk in with your black belt and be like, oh, 50% off my Big Mac meal, please. Yep. It's not happening. You know, that's not it. But it's what's so funny is when you are when you start in jiu-jitsu and you look at these jiu-jitsu people and you think, wow, they're so good. They win championships. They have a title or they're whoever they are. They're a famous person. They've got so many followers on social media. They must be amazing. No, that's that's not necessarily the case. So there's two things that I'm I'm trying to bring to light just within this chat. One, black belts are just human beings who are incredibly dedicated to a thing. Or at least were at a point. Well, yeah, at some point. Yeah. And they, they worked really hard to get that thing. You yeah. can't really get it without it. Now, there's always these, you know, black belts exposed, fake black belt, all this kind of bullshit. There's that, sure, it's clickbait, it's exciting. You find a guy wearing a black belt who shouldn't, that's fine. But really, those people do res- deserve a certain level of respect for the hard work they put in. Wait, those people, not, no, not, not the, the fake, fake ones. Not yeah. the fake ones, sorry. Yeah, F- those guys, but they're outside of this discussion. Real black belts, they put their time in, they put their effort in. They do res- deserve some respect. You can't forget what they've done. But also, that doesn't mean they're the best person in the world. So you can't expect more from them than being good at that thing 
and and doing their job in that way. It would be great if being a black belt meant you had some ethics or some moral standard, but that's just not really the case. So do you think that I've got a couple of questions on this. Do you think that a black belt, because uh, every, every person, every coach who gives a black belt will have their own kind of nuanced view of what a black belt yeah, it should, is, right? Do you think there should be some consideration of how that person conducts themselves in life? I do. To me, get to me, that me, rank. Me personally, yeah. Because yeah. I think each belt also takes a degree of personal development. Like, for example, our friend Dan, who's like wrist locking everybody. Dan's blue belt. Oh, Cess. Yeah, Cess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to name him fully, but <laughs> Dan Sester. Yeah. Shout out. What up, DJ? Yeah. <laughs> he was wrist locking everybody and just being a bag about it. It just wasn't necessary. It wasn't necessary. He could have done any. He actually knows plenty of jujitsu and has a traditional martial arts background, but he would just do it to be a dick. And I was like, but he's a bit what? of a troll. But why? Jerry loves being a troll. But why? You know, like I was just like, it's not necessary. And you could injure someone. So. What don't don't it's, like, it's do that. just an armbar on the wrist. <laughs> I don't know if that's it's true, but a knee bar on the wrist. <laughs> so I said Jules is it, like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Jules is shaking his head. Anatomically incorrect. Um but I just said to him, dude, you could do anything. You can show your level of skill as to why you should be a blue belt by demonstrating more of what your jujitsu is. I just said to him, dude. Like, and I actually sat on him. I didn't give him a blue belt for ages. He was good enough. But I actually sat on him and let him be a four-stripe white belt until he actually made a bit of a change personally. That's just me as a coach. Yeah. Whereas another coach may not care or may not do that. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think So you think that it, there should be a consideration of the person as a whole? That's me. But then also I have my own, you know, expectations or whatever. So then, and, and I, would, I would agree with that because, you know, I also value those things. What about um, where do you think the entitlement does actually exist? Because we, we, okay. do, we definitely do know that there's okay. black belts that take themselves way too seriously. Sure. And they almost, and they, they kind of conduct themselves in the gym like they are some kind of special race. Well, it's almost the opposite of the whole leave your ego at the door. It's like, yeah. bring your ego with your belt. Yeah. You, <laughs> you leave know? yours there. Mine comes in. Yeah. My, my, my big belt, my big ego. <laughs> You know, yeah. But this is where we can talk a little bit about seniority, say. Right. So when I when I was a lowly blue belt, you know, I had a lot of social blunders with not respecting black belts. Like being called to roll and saying no. Yeah. Or calling a black belt to roll. You know, stuff like this. But then also Which for the younger players, that's a thing in some gyms. It's it's, it's not, not a thing in, in some others, gyms necessarily. But also appreciating if you have two black belts rolling really hard. And they roll into you and it's your blue belt and your mate's a white belt. You move for them because what you're doing is not as important as what they're doing. Literally, they're doing high level gymnastics, quantum physics. You are building sandcastles. Like, I actually disagree with that, but I get it. that it's No, no, I, I, don't, I, I, I am fully of the belief that if black belts roll into you, you should get out the way for your own health and safety. But also what they are doing is more important than what you're doing. I believe that. If you're rolling on the map with black belts, your white belt and blue belt, at that in that moment in time, even if you're a future world champion, you, you what you're doing isn't isn't on the same level as what they're trying to achieve in terms why of is, why is why is their training more important than yours in that moment? Why is solving world hunger more important than getting Instagram followers, Joey? Uh, well, I can, I can tell you why that is, but that doesn't answer my question because two black belts rolling, it's just a training session. Are yeah. they both like, well, their, their training is more important than yours. If you're on the map with black belts, two black belts trying to solve the problem, black belt problems are more important than white belt problems. No, I disagree. I think it's, it's more complex and that they're, you know, there's, yeah, so, so that requires more space potentially, but more, no, yeah, but I don't think it's more important. Why is that? Because it's just training. They're just two people doing their best. Solving, solving a more complicated problem and what you're doing. Yeah, but you're not actually, um, like you're not actually solving like your world. Huh? You're not actually fixing something for the world. You're just yeah, you, no, you developing. You may be creating a new form of jujitsu, which then benefits them. 
the, the, the two white belts rolling or the white belt and blue belt rolling are just learning to walk. Yeah, but, I, but it's like, it's like, hey, like, that's like me saying to my son, like, dude, you can't even walk properly, so let dad do his. Yeah, you go in the playpen and we'll occupy the whole house because you own the house. Yeah, but I, I still, I, I get your point. I get that you see it as different, but I still disagree that yeah. it's, it's any more important. Yeah, but I don't think you can, you can disagree, but I don't think you can justify your point any greater than I can justify my point. Literally. You seem, yeah, yeah, I get it. Like, it's, how, we how often, can you justify that two white belts who don't know what they're doing yeah. and possibly might even be talking some shit and not rolling, two black belts who are literally trying to kill each other with the most complicated jujitsu they know within their development, right? They are doing something which, within the context of jujitsu, is more valuable. It's not. I believe it is. Yeah, I, I, yeah, fair. So, yeah, that's I think why, so this is where it comes in, but right? This is, yeah, I, don't, I don't think it's of more you're value. You're a black belt. That's, that's entitlement. Yeah, I think it's... You're I think that's very entitled there. Yeah, like so... Like a lot of gyms work like that, right? And I'm like, yeah, I think that's fine. Like if that's what the leader of the gym believes is important, then great. But I'm like, it's just a training room. Everyone here in here is trying to get better. Some people are technically better than others. Some people are earlier on in that journey. But your journey is just as valuable as mine right now. The difference there would be, hey, this is two world championship potentials who are preparing for a competition. Okay, I could say that objectively – that is of more value than just two people who but are why, doing But how can you say that's the case? How can you say, oh, world championship potentials versus black belts who are still operating at a very high level who aren't world champions? Like, because it's, it's the I'm, same thing. Because I'm a black belt. When I'm training, I'm not solving world yeah, hunger. But that's just, I'm not, yeah, but that's just you, bro. That's your take on no, your I, black belt. I, yeah, but so I would say that that as an attitude is entitled. Is, is entitled. You can say it's entitled. I say it's earned. Right. I say literally, you've spent 10 years to have your level of knowledge and if a white belt wants to benefit from your knowledge and you getting better, what can that white belt in the context of jujitsu teach I'm, the black belt? They can't. No, but if I'm not. I'm allow, not. But I'm not doing anything for the white belt in that moment. It's not. It's, no, no, no. You're not doing. I it could for say the like white, I'm developing no, no, you're something. You're not doing it for the white belt. I'm saying, if Levi and Lachlan Giles are rolling together on a mat mm. and they roll into me, we're all black belts. I will move the fuck out the way because whatever they're doing, whatever they're working on. I will learn from. I know that in that moment, they're doing some shit that I'm not, that's not on my level. I have enough perspective to get the fuck out of the way because I know at the end of that role, I can be like, yo, what the fuck are you just, and they're like, yo, I was doing this, I was doing that. I will benefit from allowing them to work. If you don't have enough perspective to see that you're a fucking idiot, you know nothing, and these two are masters, then you are missing the point. Yeah, I, so I think where I, like, so where I think there's a difference there is more just in the logistics that, so like fair, all right, like, yeah, like Levi and Lockie could be a thing, um, but the logistics of, hey, you need to assess who's coming your way and act, I'm like, no, no, everyone just stays in an area and when you go out of the area, you come back in. Yeah, of course, you can, but if it's a crowded mat, sometimes people roll into each other. This is inevitable in jiu-jitsu, especially if you train in a small gym. Yeah, it's true. Right? But but again, We've I'm like you that. just if you uh, for me, and this is just uh, you know how I would run things if I'm the rare occasions when I coach, is that like hey that's your spot and just stay there and but if you roll out of it you go back. That's just not how it works. Like I mean yeah we could do that, but think even about the gyms you've trained at. People roll into it. I've been kicked in the head multiple times. I didn't ask. Yeah, but what it's, rank are you? You can't kick me in the head. I got kicked in the head. I was like oh damn. But that's what I mean. It's the right of way thing to go. Oh wait, they're of higher rank. Let's move out of the way. I just think that. I don't think that what they're doing has any greater value. I think that it, if you say that it's, hey, it's just how we do it because there's a hierarchy here and these people are higher up in the range, I'm like, okay, fair. No, but, but, what, I, don't but think, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see how that's any different because that's just like an edifice and just like, oh, they're black belts. And well, that's, it, it, it is in terms of it's not requiring necessarily like, a, like an actual logical justification of why they should get right of way. It's just like, hey, they're higher ranked. They've been here for longer. They've got more so experience. So does it make sense to adhere to something that's not logic? It's just a rule where something else might actually prove to be logical and then the other person should just get out the way. Well, it's a different logic, right? My logic is, hey, that's your space. Stay in it and everyone can manage that. And we, hey, we're here. Cool. That's where we are. Like that's easy. Versus one is asking other people to be aware of what they're doing, but also aware of, but who they are and where they are. But that's jujitsu, man. Like I, I will look to free space. Like you've had it where you've been 
single legged up into a wall. And then you look around you and people have rolled into your space. Yeah. And you're like, you both know between you, whether it's you and I, you and Adam, you go, this isn't about seniority. We just have to move to space, right? So you just move to where the free space is. I think it's very difficult to just stay in your space. What I'm trying to talk to here is that there is a difference between what black belts know in jiu-jitsu and what white belts know. And that white belts will benefit from letting black belts work. You don't let your son interrupt you when you're on a Zoom call trying to sort out our app. You say, all right, buddy, you go outside. Daddy's working. That's literally what the f*** is going on. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe, right? I, yeah, no, no, I still, no. I like... We don't have to agree. We don't have to agree. Well, this is... And plenty of people correct. are going to go, JT is a fucking entitled black belt. Well, you know, I guess, you I know, guess I'm going like... Joey's the man of the people and he really gets it. <laughs> well, it's kind of picking and choosing the entitlement, right? It's like, hey, I'm entitled to this, but I'm... I'm so, you know, I'm just saying, like, if we're voting you're for... You're trying him, to like, say equiminical. You try to keep it, like... Yeah, I try to keep it simpler. Like, no, there's no... Just, you, you train in your space and that's it. Sure. Well, this is where we can go into ego too, right? Yeah. Because uh, we... Do we want to name the guy? We're talking about coming for all the, the achievements. Oh, no, no. Well, I... I color, color belt ego. Color belt, young fella coming up. I, I actually kind of think that's an unrelated point in a way. it's right? No, no, no. I think that I think that that's just an example of like culturally how things have changed, right? In terms of but when, like when a younger gets a blue belt, the white belts do give them a bit more respect, right? Like they go, "Ooh, blue belt." Yeah, you, it's just a, it's very you know humans are very visual. Yeah. Oh shit, that's a purple belt. Oh, that's a weird looking purple maroni belt that's faded and tattered. Well, you know, that, like, but that's yeah. I mean, like, look, jujitsu is a hierarchy, of yes. course. So people that are higher in the hierarchy are going to get more respect from the people that are lower because everyone's trying to climb up. Sure. So naturally you're like, I respect that person because of X, you know, which that's, uh, that's just a, like we put that value on it, right? For sure. whatever it's worth. And we, I but, don't now, th- but now that, that sport jiu-jitsu is more of a thing and say, no, gi, yeah, this is where you see people like, I don't respect that. I don't give a but I will heal hook that mother <laughs> into sure. oblivion. For sure. But... No gi gym still award belts, <laughs> which is well, a they're, irony, they're right? They're stuck in Here's a bind because like, you will never I? wear. Yeah, they should just so they just f- off belts all together, and it's just all about whoever's winning the ADCC. Like, what's going on there? Because here's uh, the thing: they're, they're in a bind because they want you want you want something to be able to rank someone, yeah, to 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 reward them along the path. But they they're also kind of trying to separate themselves from, from this the hierarchical kind of structure, yeah. which is part of the martial arts tradition. So, I, yeah, it's a tricky one, right, for a no-gi gym. Yeah, definitely. And here's the thing, I, and this is not to go back on anything I said. I believe jiu-jitsu has taught me you can learn anything from anyone. Like a white no, you belt... You can't say that now. I can't say that. You can't. I can't say that. But they're a toddler. What are they going to teach me? They might teach me the They simple, can't even fucking walk. They bro. might teach me They the don't simple, even know how to chew their food they properly. Might s- teach me the simple simplicity of a flower. Like, here's a flower, Dad. <laughs> ah, like, so oh wow. This could be the biggest Insight. lesson of the day. No, I've I've said it before. Like a white belt could say something insightful. You go, wow, that's r- wow. That's insightful. Because they see it differently. But they can't show me how to sweep. They can't sweep me. They can't take my back. They can't anything. But I might be like, Ro, that's wow, that's that is insightful, but your jujitsu still sucks. Do you know what I mean? That's something there. Yeah, 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 I get you. So what I'm saying is when we get a new belt, and this is why I want to talk about respect, ego, all these things, because I believe this is one of the bigger myths in jiu-jitsu, which is, you know, leave your ego at the door. Ego is not part of this. Like, your ego is not your amigo. <laughs> great saying. Um, happy things happen, happen to happy people. That's Spanish for friend. <laughs> wow, thanks, Joe. Just cultural diversity on this one. When you get a new belt, People do, you see it, people swell a little. Like they, some, some people, they get the belt and they kind of go, oh, yeah, you f- I've leveled up, right? Yeah. I earned this. Yeah. So, of course, there is like a little layer of, of I'm better now or I've been acknowledged. And you can see the, and you can see people rolling better. You're like, wow, they're really, you know, that belt looks good on them, right? Like that's, it's a thing and it, it's, it's, it's a self-perception. It's ego. It's like, I think I'm better, therefore I am better. Yeah. And there are plenty of people who are really good who don't see themselves as being particularly good and therefore they kind of perform under their potential. So I actually think that ego is an actual important part of 
your development in jiu-jitsu. This idea of no ego, none of this, like... Yeah, the, the whole no ego thing's a little bit misguided. I, yeah. I agree. It's like, you, it's, it's an integral part of how you operate as a human. I guess you just need it to be something that's in check and doesn't, sure. doesn't maybe take over, you know, your, your approach to things. I think if you're training at the right gym, you do get checked. You know, like, jiu-jitsu will check you. Yeah, but, but you know, so I, I guess if we're, like, breaking down, like, where the ego can become toxic for an individual is, like, maybe where you're getting checked, right? Like, you're getting your ass handed to you constantly, but your ego is so f***ing big that you, you refuse, refuse to acknowledge, to acknowledge that. And you yeah. just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Versus this, the, the egoless thing in that moment would be to go, hey, purple belt, I'm a, I'm a brown belt, but how do you keep catching my leg in that position? Can you right. show me what you're doing how, there? How can I Right, like that, or, hey, coach, JT keeps catching me here. Like that's the egoless kind of thing. Yeah. In in terms of how we typically talk about ego, isn't it? Sure. But I guess when, because I want to relate this back to respect, I believe that you can have a healthy sense of self, like self-respect and still respect others. You know, you don't like, you can have a, a some might say, oh, that's egotistical. But then we talk about like ego and confidence. Like is ego just inflated sense of self without any support or or is it just you rub someone the wrong way because you're confident do you know what i mean a lot of people will label something as ego but from what i understand your ability to support your claim or your ability to do what you say really equates to ability and confidence as opposed to ego which is kind of confidence without support or without evidence yeah do you know what i mean like someone who talks a big game but then sucks Whereas we all love the person who talks a big game and backs it up. You're yeah. fucking nothing. You know, yeah, like, I mean, yeah, like, yeah, con- confident. They're kind of different things, but they often get kind of conflated. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, Confused. like com- confidence is a thing. Like, there's ways to there's ways to express your confidence that are you know. Then there's Gordon Ryan, where it's just like, <laughs> sure. but but you know, but his is also supreme confidence that comes from performing consistently. At a, so in a way, it's where it gets mixed though. Like say with him as an example, is that he's also he also seems to be a bit of a yeah. You know, like he just says yeah. some horrible shit, and he you're does. like, okay. So what we need to separate there is extremely confident and high performing, and then also a bit of a. <laughs> and you're yes. like, and it doesn't mean that for you to be confident and high performing, you can still be a nice person. You don't have to include that piece. Yeah, and I I think this is like you can separate the art from the artist. You can go, wow, that guy's great at jujitsu, but man, I am not agreeing with that guy's view on life. Yeah, you know, it, you know, this guy could be my jujitsu coach, but he's not my life coach. You know, you could buy, but then it's there's this other thing about like within respect, like respecting somebody. Do you respect someone who's really good at jujitsu? They're great. They're a black belt. They do all this stuff. But then also they smoke and they drink and they party and their diet's terrible and, you know, like they, they do all these things that maybe your moral or ethical compass doesn't align with. Do you keep supporting someone who behaves in a certain way which doesn't line up with your values? Is that someone you respect? Can you just respect pure jiu-jitsu skill without the personal? Yeah. That's what I'm... Which you've got to weigh up. Maybe you do, but maybe it's hard for you to reconcile. Yeah. In which case you want to maybe find someone else. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like they talk about, you could have somebody who's like, uh, they talk about like someone who looks attractive, but they behave in an ugly way. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like you, you see somebody through social media, like, wow, this person's so attractive and they appear to do all these good things. You meet them in person. You're like, oh my God, I can't respect that. Actually, there was a question that came from uh, a friend of the show about, sort of reconciling when you have training partners, like people in your gym who, you know, you train with, they're your teammates, but they, sh- they have views outside of the gym. Oh yeah. That are very much um, in opposition to your own. Yes. And the, uh, you know, regarding, and this, the specific example was like um, in regards to like gay rights right. or LGBTQI rights yes. and um, equality and stuff. Sure. And it's like, that's a, that's a very personal question. It is. I, I would, not proposed to be able to answer that for someone right i think you really have to be like can i separate that and just appreciate these people for what they are or does that actually mean so much to me that i need to not be around these people 
Yeah, I, I, I think obviously you... Or can I try and influence here? Yeah, could you? That, that's a very good point because I think people can change. I yeah. believe that fully. I know a lot of people out there don't think that. But you, if you're prepared to cop the things that you don't like, you could be the positive change that makes that person more accepting or more open to an idea. Yeah. But I do believe it's worthwhile to be around people you don't agree with because otherwise you do end up in a bit of a, a bubble or an echo chamber. Yeah. So even though you might think, oh, why the f does that person say that horrible stuff? You can, if you, if you are open to it, you can also be like, well, I don't agree with you, man. And that's okay. You know, like I think it, it's, it, it, it can be conflicting, but you could be like, nah, I'm, I'm going to still roll with you. I'm still going to respect you as a human, but I'm not going to try and be anything like you. We're just going to do jujitsu together. And that's fine. I'm going to save all my nasty chokes for you, bro. I'm a knee ride your neck. Yeah, you know? like, <laughs> personally, I, I I would just I I don't like being around. Like I can't be around. I don't want to be people around people you're not aligned with. Yeah, so I just be like, nah, f that. Find somewhere cooler. That yeah, would be, that no, would no, be I me. Think that's, I think that's good. I I. But for some people, they don't have an option. Exactly. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, and so to get some clarity within this wide ranging discussion, indeed, respect. I believe that you can separate someone's jiu-jitsu skills from who they are personally and you can respect somebody's jiu-jitsu game and and understand it and learn from it and also you know there's cautionary tales we can learn from people's mistakes you know we we see people who do things that we don't agree with and it doesn't mean you avoid them completely you go well that's a lesson i'm not going to do that you know so i think <clears throat> one respecting someone's skills how much time they've put in, you can see that, but you can also see through where someone maybe they're not good at jujitsu, but they're a great person. So, like, well, I'm going to give that person the time of day because I really respect who they are as a person. You know, even though they just suck in class, they never get, they always ask the wrong question and they always stuff up. You're like, you know what? You're a good person. You know, I could, I got time for you. And I, I think it's, it's not always the way that you find someone. I think, who, do, are you sorry to cut you off? Are you kind of trying to sort of clarify what you're saying there? Are you saying that yes, the belt thing is to be respected, but it's also important to understand that every person is a person, and that they it's not just like what you know of them tends to be just that one little snippet on the mats. Yes. Versus like, no, that's a whole person that lives a life that yeah. works and has shit they're creating yeah. and. And you need to be able to like take that whole thing into account. Yeah, well, I'll give an example. Like one of the biggest injury machines I knew, a guy who would come in and be like, oh, my wrist's bad, my knee's bad, and he'd hurt you. He's real mean. His mum was dying of cancer. I didn't know that. Really protracted, like three years. And eventually she died. And then I never got to train with him. I never saw him. After that, I just third party found out through a friend that his mum had passed away. But you kind of like low-key hated that mother. I'd always of, hated that guy, how he man. conducted it's himself. Like, this guy always hurts me, man. Yeah. Like, why is this guy so mean? He had a lot of sadness in him, you know? Yeah. And so I put a bit more context around it. Like, wow, I wouldn't, I would, I never knew what he was going through. Right. And a lot of the time we don't know what people are going through. No, like you don't get to have those conversations much, but yeah, I, I forgave him, you know, in my head, I was like, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm here now. I don't know where he is right now, but you know, I forgive that guy because you know, life's hard and stuff off the mat can be really hard. So I think acknowledging that, yes, People are a belt, but they're also a whole human. And yeah, being able to put the respect in context around all of that, black belt, color belt, white belt, doesn't matter. That's really important in terms of respect in BJJ. Yeah, solid. Okay.